touring cars on the circuit at Lakeside International Raceway, warming up prior to the sixth round of the National Series, sponsored, of course, by Shell Ultra High. And a tremendous turnout of spectators here today. They've all come along to barrack for one Queenslander by the name of Dick Johnson. And he certainly rewarded them yesterday by locking up pole position with a 54.07. Let's take a look the way they line up today. Dick Johnson, pole position yet again in the Shell Ultra High Sierra. Two is car six, Andrew Medecki in the Oxo Supercube Sierra. From three, 18, Johnny Bauer in the second of the Shell Sierras. From four, car number three, Tony Longhurst in the Freeport Motorsport Sierra. From five is car 30, Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Nissan Skylight. Starting out of position six, car 11, Larry Perkins, the first of the Holden Commodores. From seven, car number five, Peter Brock in the Mobile One Racing Team BMW. From eight, car number one, Jim Richards, the second of the Mobile BMWs. From nine, car four, Colin Bond, the Caltex Racing Ford Sierra. Rounding out the top 10, 16, Gary Scott, the Rally Art Australia Starion with a 55.90. There's just a sample of the huge turnout of spectators here at Lakeside International Raceway. In Petri, just outside of Queensland, 30 kilometres away from the downtown area. And Dick Johnson receiving a tremendous ovation from the spectators around the circuit on the warm-up lap. Can he do it again today? Dicky Johnson, there he is, man of the moment. 43 years of age, a Brizzy boy. First in the 81, 82 and 84 Australian Touring Car title. The accident shortened James Hardy, 1,000 of 81. Nine times Queensland Touring Car champion and currently numero uno in the Shell Ultra High Series. And doing it today for Queensland. And the fastest man in this morning's warm-up by two one-hundredths of a second from Andrew Medecki. Tony Longhurst was third quickest. In fact, they were all very closely matched with their race setups, unlike yesterday's qualifying. Five drivers, Johnson, Medecki, Longhurst, Bow, and Seaton, separated by less than three tenths of a second. That'll give you some indication of what's to come for the next 60 laps. And then the next group of five drivers, Moffat, Richards, Perkins, Bond, Brock, were all within an absolute split second of each other. Just about set for the start. Round six of the Shell Ultra High Touring Car Nationals from Lakeside Raceway. Johnson moves before the line. They're racing. Johnson away smartly. Absolutely jumped out of there. Whether or not he'll get peaked for jumping the start, we'll wait and see. John Bow up immediately on the outside of Medecki, and they're looking for a Shell 1 2 as they help into the carousel for the first time. Moffat's made a shocking start again in the ANZ Ford Sierra. You could bank on that. Dick Johnson, I think, was. Uh, well, it was Bob, and there's one round, that's Andrew Bagnall, number eight. Gulliver's Travels, you betcha. He's off on the edge of the track, and he'll come out running last at the moment behind uh, Lyndon Reefmuller in the 190 Mercedes. I was going to say it was an enthusiastic start by Dick. I'll leave it at that. We'll have to see that one later on. But Johnson leads comfortably at the moment. Medecki in second, John Bauer forcing his way up to third. Then Tony Longhurst. Glenn Seaton appears to have got a pretty good jump as well in the Nissan. Larry Perkins has come away well. The Nissan defending from both the mobile BMWs and then Colin Bond followed by Gary Scott. And the cheers from the fans, the bumper crowd here at Lakeside, almost deafening the noise of the cars. Absolutely going berserk and they'll tear the joint apart if they do penalise Dick Johnson. But I think he certainly cribbed a half a car length at the start. But he's got more than a half a car length lead now over Andrew Medecki, then John Bauer. Look at Longhurst creeping up on the inside, trying to get under Bauer as they go into the carousel. I think this is where the race is going to be, second, third, fourth and fifth for the moment. As they come out of there, Medecki, John Bauer very anxious to go on with it. Tony Longhurst sits just in behind them. Not a bad start from Tony Longhurst. Larry Perkins just in behind Longhurst, leading the uh, Commodores. There's Andrew Medecki, the Oxo Supercube Sierra. Johnny Bound, Dick Johnson's second car, the 18 car, and rounding him up very, very quickly indeed is Tony Longhurst in the Freeport Motorsport Sierra, and Lightning Larry Perkins in for the ride behind them. Off Motorcraft Hill and down to Castrol Corner. There's Medecki. Some tyres, noise. Ooh. And uh, Dick Johnson, the news comes through, has been penalised one minute for jumping the start. That is going to be a hard penalty to pull back in this field this afternoon. On the last corner, Andrew Medecki seemed to have a big bucket full of understeer, and he's gone off. There's Tangles Andrew. with John Bauer. He lost a lot of ground at the top of the straight, ran wide. John Bauer was able to get through him, passed him midway down the straight, and then the two have tangled now through the carousel. That was pretty hairy stuff. It certainly was. Here they come out of Yokohama. That should put John Bauer in front. Tony Longhurst running in second and Larry Perkins sitting now right on the tail of Longhurst as they drop down into Hungry Corner. Most of the spectators here unaware 
that Dick Johnson has incurred a one-minute penalty. Here's our NEC replay. That little bump between John Bow and Andrew Medecki. Caught Medecki just as he was turning into the right-hander. And once it got loose, there was no way of stopping it. Great effort by Medecki to hold the car and get yeah. it back on the track, though. Look it's at Larry Perkins. He's the charger in the field at the moment. The Castrol Commodore seems to be working pretty well on this circuit. He was very quick yesterday in qualifying. He missed the first session when he had an oil pressure problem with the car and only did one lap. And he came out in the second session and knocked out a blinder of a time on the car that probably isn't that well suited to the circuit, but he's proving otherwise at the moment. Larry's quick laps will be the opening lap, so I could expect that uh, he'll feel the weight of the car and the tyres deteriorating, uh, probably after about 10 or 15 laps around here. The car sounds a little different this weekend. They're running a split exhaust system on it. It sounds like a sprint car as it rushes by. It's an unfamiliar Commodore sound, that's for sure. But the car is working as well as we've ever seen it work at the moment. He's about one and a half car lengths behind Tony Longhurst at the moment. So Dick Johnson disappears into the distance carrying a one minute penalty. John Bow in second place, having displaced Andrew Medecki when the two tangled a couple of laps back. Then Longhurst, then we've got Larry Perkins, Glenn Seaton, followed by Peter Brock, then Colin Bond, then Jim Richards being chased pretty closely by Gary Scott and Alan Moffat recovering some ground and buying into the top ten battle. And Andrew Medecki after that spin is back in 14th place, so it really has cost him very dearly. There's uh, Glenn Seaton, car number 30, pursued by Peter Brock. Oh! How, very How easy wide. was that? And so does Colin Bonds. He, I think uh, you'll find problem. that he's got problems, major ones, in the Peter Jackson Nissan Skyline. Slowing, heading on the way back to the pits. That's bad luck indeed for um, Glenn Seaton. <laughs> he just looked so uh, good in qualifying yesterday, but his race is over early. Dick Johnson, of course, carries a race cam today at Lakeside International Raceway. Let's tour the circuit with Dick. Look to the crowd off on the left. As he comes down to the left-hander, and he is absolutely storming away from the field. I'd say at this stage he is well aware of the fact he's picked up a minute penalty and uh, will be driving accordingly. Let's just hope he doesn't overstress the uh, Sierra. Let's go back to the uh, start of the race to see just how, in fact, that, uh, that jump off the line. Here we are before the start. Dick moves. Still moving, and then they go. So Dick has gone over the line. I don't think there's yeah. too much doubt about that. Yeah, it may not be just a dick problem though sometimes you can get some clutch uh, crap <laughs> how painful it is dick johnson over the top of motocraft <laughs> heads down to the other side of the hill at the moment towards castro corner minute penalty for jumping the start and the shell sierra is just storming away because he's got to pick up 60 seconds on this field i don't think he'll do it over the bus that's running second john bauer well, I don't know about that. Uh, I think it's quite uh, within the realms of possibility that as this, as this race unfolds, uh, if Johnson can continue to dictate the tempo up front uh, and Bauer could hold the rest of the field back, I think Johnson can probably win by a minute. Especially with Andrew Medecki shuffled right back through the pack now and really out of business, I, I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility. Well, it would mean, uh, working out all the calculations, I think it would mean John Bauer easing off for him. And yeah, he'd have to ease off, yeah, and hold up the rest of the field. Yes. Gee, they're, they're strong calculations. The rest of the field have probably lynched John Bauer. I bet your team manager, uh, Neil Lowe, is working on it, though, right now. I'd say so. They're looking pretty good, though. They've got a car out in front, not necessarily legally leading the race, and uh, they've certainly got the backup car, John Bauer. Peter Brock on the screen in 05, the first of the mobile team Commodores. And uh, they really... Uh, They've had a hard job this season, and uh, they've been, as Neil Crompton can testify, they've done pretty well to, to hang tough and hang in in uh, the rounds of the Touring Car Championship so far. Alan Moffat seems to be the mover in this group of cars, being led by Peter Brock at the moment. Alan, you'll recall, made a pretty dreadful sort of a start. I think he's already got past Gary Scott, and Colin Bond got by Jim Richards. So I think it's Brock, Bond then Jim, then Alan, and then Gary Scott behind in the rally art Mitsubishi Starion. There's Alan Moffat, car number nine, the ANZ Banking Sierra. As uh, Neil made a mention earlier, got off to an absolute awful start, Alan Moffat, but uh, he's coming back through the field, getting stronger with each race. Said he would drive himself into form. 
we've still got uh, a few developmental problems with uh, with the car. It's just taking an awful long time to get it sorted out and get it really set up in the race trim as he'd like it to be. But he's content with the progress, slow and steady progress. As he said, uh, for the amount of money, the investment involved in this car, he doesn't want to go out and do something silly and blow the thing up. He'd rather just take it steady and be uh, in there mixing it with them uh, towards the end of the season. Sevens race cam in the ANZ uh, Alan Moffat Sierra. And you can uh, see just what a, a challenging layout the Lakeside Circuit is. Glenn Seaton, as uh, we saw earlier, was in trouble. Uh, let's get down to Peter McKay in the pits if we can find out from the Nissan team what the problem is. Well, Glenn Seaton has retired the skyline from behind the pits, and Fred Gibson's gone back to have a chat with him. But Paul Berenger, manager of Nissan Motorsport, do you know what happened? Oh, Peter, we feel there's an overheating problem with the engine. We put a fresh engine in the car yesterday afternoon simply because we were wanted to try the new engine today and we feel we've got a problem with the water cooling of the engine. Well, these sorts of things do happen with a new motor car, but we're confident you might be able to get the thing right to stand out. Well, we're very confident, even though we've had two mishaps in a row now, we're going through an enormously accelerated learning curve, and it's a totally new car, and we've got to find out all the idiosyncrasies of it. Uh, I'm confident about Sandown. We've now put our second engine in the car, so we really becoming quite advanced with it. It is, it is strange that the, cars have, the car has failed in the race, but through qualifying and practice, no problems at all. Peter, we've had uh, two extremely long practice sessions with the car, and it's very frustrating to be in this position now. OK, down but not out. Mike. Certainly. We wait to see whether or not the same applies to Dick Johnson, who uh, has a little look over his shoulder there past the pits, taking a signal. We've got race cam, of course, with Dick Johnson, and uh, as he swings into the carousel, we might ask him, uh, Dick, how are things running at the moment? They held the damn red so the the clutch, we got a new sort of clutch in, and it picked up on the line, and the car started creeping, and now I'm driving without a clutch virtually. Gee, that's going to be tough and try to make up 60 seconds at the same time. Uh, I'll, I'll try and have a go at about that. Well, you've got a lot of people out here watching you today, mate. Pardon? You've got a lot of people out here from Brisbane watching you today. Oh, mate, what a great oh. sight. No wonder I got pumped up. Pumped up? Look, if you want a bit of adrenaline, mate, all you need is a Queensland crowd. Well, we'll let you go for a while and make up that 60 seconds. Come back to you later. Thanks, pal. So, Dick Johnson working pretty hard at the moment without the best clutch and uh, we'll try and get some gaps and see what sort of a job he's got to do. It'll be a pretty tough equation no matter how you look at it to win by 60 seconds. Well he's six seconds on John Bauer in second place at the moment. With, uh, with my boot firmly placed in my mouth I tried to explain that he may have had a little bit of clutch drama on the line. It certainly would seem that way. No guy would be uh, would be keen to just drive away like that and not not be aware of the fact that he'd be pinged for 60 seconds. You'll see the gap here on screen. There goes uh, Dick beneath our camera position. Here comes John Bauer. Three slower cars in between them, having been lapped already. Bill O'Brien, one of them. That's John Bauer, second spot. So the Shell team, one, two. What a familiar sight that has been in the rounds of the Touring Car Championship round Australia so far this year. Bauer coming up uh, into traffic. Some of the Commodores come out behind Bill O'Brien and the Everlast uh, Commodore at the moment. Keep in mind, he's trying to uh, fend off uh, Tony Longhurst and a, a horde of other cars that are sitting back behind him. Longhurst or Frank Gardner opting for the hardest tyres that they possibly have. Told me this morning, Dick and John Bauer will probably pace the race for the first 20 laps, but keep a, an eye on uh, the, the Freeport uh, Sierra after about the halfway mark. Actually, uh Longhurst has done a pretty good job in this early stage of the race to shake off Larry Perkins, as we saw in the opening laps. He, uh, Perkins' Commodore was all over the back of uh, the Freeport Sierra. Longhurst managed to get away a little on him now. Maybe this uh, slower traffic has helped, but isn't it incredible? Uh, how many laps down? Half a dozen laps down, and already they're, uh, they're lapping uh, the rear-end cars. Yes, the Commodores that uh, dictated races here at Lakeside only a few years ago going under in about uh, five or six laps. There's Longhurst working the inside of Bill O'Brien. Takes the second one, moves up behind John Bauer yet again. Keeping in mind only a week ago, Tony Longhurst inflicted Dick Johnson's first defeat at 
Richard with Johnson still running in the race. And of course, he's 30 years of age, comes from the Gold Coast, a local boy, fourth in the 86 and 87 Australian Touring Car Championship, winner of the 85 Castrol 500, winner also of the Amscar Series in 86, and currently sixth on 25 points in the National Championship Series. That's that courtesy of Nissan. No how. There's the man in question, Tony Longhurst, number three. Tony was really rapt with his performance in the warm-up. He did a 56.15 compared to Andrews 56.07, Dix 56.05. So the car was really good in race trim. Slipping about a little bit at the moment, probably more than he'd like, but does. He certainly knows how to punt along hard, and he's right in the sights of John Bow. Back at Motorcraft Hill, some dramas on our NEC replay. Gerald Kay getting in a bit of strife in the Jag Parts Commodore decides to go rally crossing and rejoins the circuit. It looks as though without any drama, but dropped a couple of spots in the pro, uh, process. So Long is punting along nicely, I think. Stop what's telling me at the moment that he's really got Johnson's sights quite nicely. Yes, noticeable now, closing up on John Bauer, the battle for a second and third. Alan Moffat, by the way, is now up to seventh place, having uh, blown the start badly, as we saw earlier. 13 laps completed. This is where the race is because Tony Longhurst, or Frank Gardner, state manager, would be well aware of the fact that Dick Johnson has incurred a minute penalty for rolling over the start line before the flag went down so Tony would know the man in front of him is just the man he has to pass for victory because the chances of Dick Johnson being able to pick up uh, 60 seconds on the pair of these drivers is somewhat remote so he'll charge after John Bow. He's going to find it hard to get past Bow, though I'll tell you. <laughs> yep but uh, he's the more forceful of the two drivers make no mistake about that he'll probably take a few more risks than well John let's recap them for you on the Castrol scoreboard clever Dick wasn't so clever getting off the line but he still leads the race John Bow teammate is second Longhurst is third Larry Hawkins is fourth Colin Bond runs in fifth lap 18 of 60 what a race we've got going here at Lakeside Andrew Badecki Car number six, you'll recall, went into the first turn. Sideswiped with uh, John Bauer, went out of the grass and came in running dead last. And now he's made it all the way back up through the field and sits behind Alan Moffat. So Andrew Medecki in seventh spot. Alan Moffat runs in sixth, one of the mobile BMWs, in fifth just ahead of him. And expect Andrew Medecki to be on the tail of Alan Moffat, given a couple of laps. There's Colin Bond just in front of that group and Moffat makes a charge now on the BMW down on the inside that's Peter Brock. Well Peter's given him plenty of room which is a sportsman like thing to do. These two guys have got a great deal of respect for each other and the BMW has the advantage under brakes. But Peter looked over realized the Ford had some speed down the straight but it's not showing that through the corners and so Alan has to go and do a repeat performance and Andrew Medecki all the time getting closer to these guys. This is where the action's going to be for the next few laps. Bond just up ahead of these guys. Then Brock, Moffat, Medecki. Medecki and Moffat both anxious to go faster. Both having made up uh, tremendous ground after early mishaps. Medecki's uh, teammate was uh, also in trouble earlier in the race. Andrew Bagnall spearing off at the top of the circuit and doesn't seem to have got back to the action. I'll tell you what, Andrew's uh, tired going to be a bit second-hand if he... Uh throws that around. Here's Alan Moffat making the run. He's just got Brock now at the right time. And passes Brock. That moves him to fifth. So Moffat to fifth. Colin Bond is fourth. And Medecki still sitting in behind Peter Brock. We'll see what pressure he can put on Peter Brock in the next lap. Gee, they are close. This is great racing. Look at Medecki straight around the outs. <laughs> there. But he gets the inside run for the sweeper. Brock Keeps it wide. Brock doing a good job here, hounding them all in the Mobile 1 BMW 05 car. It was fantastic to stand at the end of the Armco railing down that little... Well, you can't really call it a straight, it's so twisty. Yesterday afternoon when everybody was going for it on qualifiers and watching all top 10, you know, Australia's best touring car drivers rushing around there on two wheels with the cars really leaping about. There's some great stuff. Just as they whip out from under that uh, Dunlop Bridge and take that kink, there's a change in the camber in the road, which doesn't help. But the cars just seem to drift on two wheels halfway across the circuit. Yeah, it's bright racket. Down to the carousel again. And Andrew Medecki closing 
on Alan Moffat at the ANZ uh, Banking Sierra. Number nine, there's Medecki. Six, the Oxo Supercube car just ahead of them. Bond at the Caltech CXT entry. 21 laps completed out of 60. We've gone just over a third of the race distance. I don't like Dick's chances of pulling 60 seconds back. I mean, that's an enormous margin in motor racing. It sounds easy, but it just rolls off the tongue. 60 seconds, and if anything, this weekend represents the first time that the opposition Sierra is really on Dick's pace, very close to him. This Meanwhile, is the scrap. John Bauer, Tony Longhurst. Still not much in it at the moment. A little puff of blue between gear changes and John Bauer's car, although it was doing that yesterday as well. I don't think it's any cause for alarm. Both the drivers putting in neat, tidy laps, mindful of the fact that they have to get their tyres to last for 60 laps. Just confirming again that Dick Johnson jumped the start in this race. And this is the man who presently leads it, John Bauer, 33 years of age, from Devonport and Tassie. First in the 84-85 Australian Formula One Championship. First in the Australian sports car title in 86. Second in the James Hardy 1000, as we used to know and love it. And currently third, 62 points in the Australian Touring Car Championship. He is the official race leader. Sought uh, confirmation of that from the CAMS officials. So John Bauer is the race leader. Tony Longhurst runs second on the road. And there's an early casualty. And that, of course, is uh, Gary Scott, the Mitsubishi Starion, the rally art entry. Bad luck for Gary. In the meantime, Alan Moffat is starting to, uh, to really get on the pace. He's closed up uh, right on the tail now of Colin Bond. There's Bond just ahead of him in the Caltech CXT entry. Larry Perkins just one spot ahead of Colin Bond. They've been pulling Perkins in over the last couple of laps. As one would expect, the tyres going off on the uh, Commodore, carrying a weight penalty, obviously, against these lightweight Sierras. This is the battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Now, Longhurst with a good break on these three. One of the uh, Reith Muller uh, Mercs out. I think it's Lyndon's car, in fact. It's good to see them here supporting the Australian Touring Car Championship, their two-car team, Lyndon Reithmuller. Phil and Ward is still Phil out Ward. there. Yep. Yeah, bad luck because uh, he's an enthusiast and uh, he's putting money into the sport and he figures he may as well be out there having a go himself. Uh, obviously he can't run with, uh, with the likes of these guys, but he enjoys it and uh, more than makes up the numbers. And the Mercs have been quicker at uh, every round that they've raced in the last... Uh, couple of months, particularly at Amaru Park in the Amscar series. Got a real race going here for the minor seat. Bond's car just picking up the back wheel as it went through the sweeper there beneath the bridge. He's closed up really on the back now of uh, Larry Perkins. And Moff the top is giving them quite a ride here today. Past uh, Drew Price in the 31 Toyota. This is the best run we've seen from Alan Moffat so far in the championship. A delayed start to the 1988 Shell Series. He's slowly coming to grips with a car that is uh, a little bit difficult to drive when you've got 500 horsepower on tap. And it all comes in with a big rush. Uh, it takes a few races to, uh, to really get into the swing of things. Yes, I, I believe at the start when Moffat did his first race, everyone expected to come out and knock Johnson off. But uh, as he told us at the time, he was going to drive himself into this car. It's not like Moffat or Brocky or any of the other drivers who can just naturally jump in a car and bring the neck to the car. Deary me, they've, they're uh, not only on land here watching the racing today, even out on the lake. I bet you they didn't pay their attention. Oh, that's Medecki. in and out of the pits. So that was for a set of uh, shoes. Yeah, yeah, I'm certain I saw some damage on the front right of his car, and that's probably what uh, caused him to pit. But look at um, the action here now as Colin Bond gets right on the rear of uh, Larry Perkins, pulls out to make a passing manoeuvre with uh, Moffat sliding in behind him as well as they come down past the start finish line, take the kick down into the carousel. Thick and fast, the action coming in this round six of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. So but Larry's making them work uh, for every dime that they can pick up off the pavement today. Meanwhile, though, up front, John Bauer. That's who leads the race. And Tony Longhurst, who the Queenslanders will now adopt as the race favourite. 
Tony has opted uh, to take the conservative way with rubber. This is a very uh, tough track on tyres, as so many of them are in the Australian Touring Car Championship Series. Tony has gone for D14 Dunlops. That's the, the hardest available race compound. And uh, the man he's chasing, John Bow, is possibly on D3s, which are a slightly softer compound. And Tony maintained that as this race unfolded, he had a better chance of getting with the leaders. Well, he's already there. And, well, he uh, was, but he's... He's, uh, he's dropped back a bit behind now at this stage. He closed up. Oh, there's Andrew Bagnall. I thought he was on his way to Brizzy and Expo. I wonder if he's been out there since we saw him last. Big, big promo, that, for Andrew. So they came out of Yokohama Corner. And Tony's swaying up around a bit in the breeze here with the Freeport car. Getting a little sideways. And the track's getting wider for him as well. So uh, whether or not the uh, 14s have gone off. But... He comes on and in fits and spurts Tony Longhurst. He'll drop back 100 metres and come charging at John Bow like a raging bull. But as you can see, Bow still controls it. We take race cam out of Alan Moffat's ANZ Banking Sierra. It's great to see the little guy with the glasses doing so well and being so competitive in amongst the field here today. There's Perkins, Bond. Bagnall's just had a big lose. He's back on the racetrack in front of them. And here comes Moffat down the outside as well as Bond sneaks by. One wheel on the grass and here comes Moff straight down the outside on Perkins. Goes in deep. Perkins rips across the racetrack at him. Is he going to give him racing room coming out? No. No, he had to lose out there. He said you make your own luck in this business, Al. There was really only one answer for that one. Yes. Gee, look at uh, Bond pull away now that he's got round Perkins. Car 31, Drew Price has pulled off. Well, Price exits the, uh, the sixth round here at uh, Lakeside this afternoon. And up front, I can tell you that Dick Johnson has only put uh, three or four seconds uh, into his teammate John Bauer, so he's a, a long way short of getting back that minute. This will be good this time down the start, finishing straight. Watch Moffat. He's trying to get it all launched up, get alongside. Ooh. 31 uh, created a bit of a brush fire there. I don't think the driver's well aware of it, but the grass is reasonably green here at Lakeside. He's got his little extinguisher. And the marshal is there to help out. As they come out of the turn, as we can see, Alan Moffat has worked his way past uh, Larry Perkins. They go beneath the bridge. So, we'll see now whether or not Moffat can uh, haul in Colin Bond in the Caltex entry. Larry was doing a good job there of uh, trying to hold his place on the racetrack, but he's going to have Brock right underneath him the next lap or so, because I think the tyres have gone off completely on the number 11 Commodore. Just look at the ground that he's made up. Coming up to half distance lap, 30 of 60, round 6 of the Touring Car Nationals from Lakeside International Raceway. Larry Perkins really Let's now paying the weight penalty as we uh, check the placings on the Castrol scoreboard. John Bow, leader on the track from Longhurst, Bond, Moffat and Perkins with Johnson suffering a one-minute penalty for jumping the start. Welcome back to Lakeside International Raceway and the race leader, John Bow, car number 18, heading into the pit area. What a shock here today at Lakeside. We've had just so many incidents so far and there is Bow heading in, race leader, for the last uh, 15 laps of the race. Well, that puts Longhurst into the lead, and Colin Bond will now be in second place in the race. Bad luck for John Bauer. Johnson, of course, being penalised a minute for jumping the start. The Shell team cars in all sorts of trouble here today in the sixth round of the championship. Oh, what's happened to Colin Bond? There's Bondy. Oh, dearie me, they're dropping out like flies. Well, Colin had managed to go past uh, Peter Brock and Alan Moffat, so this would, in fact, what, lift Moffat to second Moffat. place. There's the race leader. I'll get the gaps for you as soon as I can. Longhurst in front, Moffat's now running second, Brock is third, and La uh, Larry Perkins is running fourth. Yeah, and there's Jim Richards about to be lapped by Tony Longhurst. Let's go down to the mid lane with Peter McKay. Well, it's a rare sight to see uh, a Shell Fort Sierra in the pits uh, before acceptance as John Bauer. What's your problem? Uh, well, Peter, I had a, a bit of a shunt up the backside from uh, somebody on the, uh, the second lap, and... Uh, 
but now a rear sus suspension member has failed. Now, whether they're related or not, I don't know, but anyway, it's collapsed on one side and it's, uh, it's not going, so <laughs> what more can I say? It seems that trouble comes in twos because uh, your teammate Dick Johnson has been penalised one minute for jumping the start. You didn't know about that one? No, I didn't. That's unbelievable. And we see now, just as we're talking, Colin Bond has come into the pits with an engine that sounds uh, decidedly sus, so perhaps the, uh, the pace of this race is telling on a few of the Portieras. Very, very hard circuit. It's, uh, it's so hard on the suspension and so hard on the driver, not to mention the tyres. It's unbelievable. Like, I hope we get a finish. <laughs> were you, were you uh, feeling you could keep Tony Longhurst at bay while you're out there and running hard? Yeah, I think so. You know, our plan to start with was not to get too sideways and get cocked up on the tyres, but my car started feeling a bit strange after I got that fib, so... I was, I was only going as fast as uh, was necessary. Mind you, that was nine and a half, ten. So I think we could have made it, but who, who knows? OK, well, bad luck, John Bow. But uh, even if he drops today's race, I think Dick Johnson will still be up front in the Touring Car Championship. I've got no doubt about that, Peter, but the man is up front and leading round six before a hometown crowd is Tony Longhurst in the Freeport Sierra, looking like putting two together. Amaru Park last weekend and round six of the Shell Nationals here today. The gap between Tony Longhurst and Alan Moffat is about 38 seconds. That's a really healthy lead, so there's no real pressure now on Tony. And it was 3.21 seconds from Moffat back to Peter Brock. But I noticed on the last lap that Brock seemed to have gone missing. And Larry Perkins would now have moved up into third place. So I'll try and sort this out. I suspect that Brock must have had some sort of a problem, although I believe he is still running. Well, the question, I guess, to be answered now, has Tony Longhurst stretched the tyres on the Sierra? We saw Andrew Bagnall come charging back through the field. He went to the pits for some fresh shoes, and Tony Longhurst really needs now just to settle down and not throw the car around. He's been giving it a bit of sideways treatment, following John Bass, still is, come to think of it. And Moffat is sitting in this, uh, starting out of position number nine, has made it up to uh, second and could be sitting in the box seat here if Tony has to pit. Let's go down to the pits, Peter McKay. Well, this moment hadn't dropped a lap in the 1988 Shell Touring Car Series. Bondi, what are you back here for? All we did was the uh, plug in computer came out. The car was running perfectly. Started to miss a little bit, then it just cut out on me. And I thought it might just start going again, but it wouldn't. But now, uh, got it going, it just run on three cylinders, that's all. Well, three cylinders is, is nowhere near four cylinders in, in uh, touring car racing. We'll hope that Bonnie gets out there, but at this stage it doesn't look like there's any number of guarantees. Thank you, Peter. There's the man that runs third on the track at the moment for Holden Motorsport, Larry Perkins. And he's 8.45 seconds down on Alan Moffat at the moment. And behind Larry, Peter Brock, and then quite some distance behind, we have Jim Richards. Well, there's Larry, trying to drive it as straight as he possibly can, not get the back of the car around, not heat up the tyres at all, because he's only eight back, as Neil said, behind, uh, of course, Alan Moffat, and we've got Dick Johnson coming up in the background as well. Trying to pick Dick's up gone like a, like a scolded cat. He's really doing some amazing lap times. Uh, Larry Perkins coming up towards Phil Ward in the Mercedes 190, the VP Festo entry. He and Lyndon Ruthfield are running those little cars in as many rounds of the Touring Car Championship as they can. The cars have actually been really dialing in some flash lap times. And Wardy was the captain of excitement yesterday beneath that bridge and down through the left-hander at Hungary. Placings on the Castrol scoreboard. Tony Longhurst leads from Alan Moffat. Larry Perkins in third. Peter Brock is fourth. And Jim Richards in fifth in the mobile BMW. Back in a moment. Round six of the Shell Ultra Touring Car Championship from Lakeside. Alan Moffat in the ANZ Banking Sierra number nine runs second on the road behind Tony Longhurst at the moment. But Moffat, as we mentioned before, started out of position number nine. As we're getting stronger in each round of the Touring Car Championship. Expect him to be a gun-ho front runner in the next round, which of course is uh, a week from today. And of course, Sandown. Moffat, 48 years of age, a veteran of the sport from Melbourne. 
first 73, 76, 77 and 83 touring car title. Four-time winner of the James Hardy 1000. Champion of the Endurance Series 82, 84. And first in the 87 World Touring Car Championship round of Monza in Italy. One of the most experienced drivers, if not the most experienced driver, out there in the field today. Second place on the track, uh, Alan Moffat. And interesting, you're trying to juggle all of the positions and the, the changes that we've had. Dick Johnson, although penalised a minute for jumping the start, is now, in fact, in third place. Yes, uh, that would probably bring him up. Andrew, he, of course, was running strongly. Uh, has um, dropped back behind him, so too is Larry Perkins. There's the Caltech CXT crew going to work on Colin Bond's car. Hot work there in the cockpit. This so is really, really quite uh, confusing, all this, because Longhurst has just lapped Larry, who's fourth, and you have to subtract 60 seconds from where Dick is and sort of add it all up. It's, it's uh, highly confusing, so you end up with Longhurst, Moffat, Dick and Larry Perkins, and only three of those drivers, Longhurst, Moffat, and Johnson are on the same lap, and Moffat's in danger of being lapped, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Dalva Lane. I think what it really means is that uh, Dick can beat everybody bar Longhurst, the way things are going. Yeah, that's about it. So the thing that I'll try and now work out, if I can just get my abacus squared up on the desk here, is whether or not uh, Moffat can be passed by Dick Johnson, and that's... Uh, quite a possibility by the look of it. Yeah, I think that's got every chance of happening. Uh, there's Johnson coming out of the carousel. The exit from Yokohama corner down through the sweeper now. That's coming beneath the uh, bridge. Now let's take race cam and just show you. That's the tricky part. That's where the camber changes just as they come around that kink there. And as you saw the car drifting from the inside left to the outside right of the circuit. Uh, it's a nasty feeling in the pit of the stomach, but it does set you up nicely for the next corner. Over the top of Motorcraft Hill and down. This is high speed and dangerous. A lot of the cars tend to get off the left-hand side of the circuit as they exit this corner. We saw it happen to Tony Longhurst. You get the wheels in the rough out there on the left, and then if you try and get it back, you can spear right across to the right-hand side of the circuit. Quite dangerous. You think the track's bumpy there? That's just where they repaved it to make it smooth. But from here on... Gee, these Fords are awesomely fast. Even when you listen to Dick's two cars go by, they sound like they're doing a million miles an hour. They sound different to the other Ford Sierras. And I would make the bold statement that these are probably the two fastest Ford Sierras in the world at the moment. I, yep. It would be a fascinating confrontation to see them up against the Texaco cars. Just have a listen to this thing inside. It really has some grunt. <laughs> He's stage of the race. Mail. He's bringing it home. Dick Johnson, laps running out for him as they work their way up towards the 50 mark of uh, 60 round Lakeside. But he's given the fans a show here. Most of them have been made aware of the fact that Dick has uh, been penalised 60 seconds for jumping the start. He's trying to come back through and race the clock. The man is going to make it extremely difficult for him is Tony Longhurst. And there is Alan Moffat just going through. Allen running second on the road at the moment. There's Johnson running third in the car. Number 17. So you have to recall, you have to think about it all. Johnson hasn't been passed by anybody. He's been carving his way through the field at a million miles an hour, but he was pinged for creeping at the line. So Right, but it's pretty easy to work out now. Things become clear. Lapping in 56 seconds as he is, he's only got to pass Moffat and get four seconds in front of him, and he is, in fact, then in second place in the race. Yes. I knew you were good for something, Wilco. Uh, I tell you what, it's hard keeping track of just what's been going on in this race. Yes, it's been uh, an interesting race. Probably for the It always is up here. It's always a great race. Never had a bad touring car round at Lakeside ever. And uh, Tony Longhurst will uh, lift the, the people here of Queensland. I'll point out very quickly, the only man that's capable of beating Nick Johnson this year is another Queenslander. He's done a top job last weekend, second round of the um, Amscar series. The last heat was a, a fine performance from Tony and from the team. 
of their cars been getting gradually better and better and certainly on the pace today. So there's Moffat in the foreground. Then Dick and there's Tony. Lap 50 of 60. And Brock's going to chase me around with a big stick at the end of the day because he, in actual fact, didn't drop a placing. And he's still in fourth and maintained his position in front of Jim Richards. There's the man of the moment, Tony Longhurst from Surface Paradise, driving the Freeport Team Sierra. I understand there's a petition already being circulated among the other drivers to see if they can organise a one-minute penalty for Dick Johnson at every round from here on. <laughs> That's the only way you couldn't start him off the back of the field because he'd still win. <laughs> He's given the race plenty of spice, and this man deserves um, heaps of praise. Well, so too Frank Gardner, the Freeport team. Everyone uh, naturally, oops, it's again skates it around. There's the man running fourth. Astro Boy himself, Peter Brock. The 05 Mobile BMW, and coming up behind Larry Perkins. Great deal of merit in Brock's drive in this race when you consider that uh, he was being swamped by Bond, uh, Moffat and the rest of them in the early stage of the race. Uh, and then all of a sudden he came back with a vengeance. Uh, the attrition rate has taken care of one or two of his uh, adversaries and he's headed for a good finish in this event. It was great to, uh, to listen and watch the... Uh, We've got two race cams here, wouldn't know which one to show you. We'll take Dick Johnson because he's zeroing in on the tail of Alan Moffat looking for a shot at second place here. Oh, Moffat uh, trying to hold a steady line through here. Look at the horsepower difference between these two cars though as they skate out of the turn. Watch Johnson pull out of the draft now and say, see you, Alan. That's the gap. That's just how much more squirt Johnson's motor has over most of the Sierra. And then we take the second race cam unit in Alan Moffat's car to show you the disappearing tail of the Palmer Tube Tech car just ahead of him. Johnson stretching out that gap. But as we said before, once it gets beyond four seconds on Alan Moffat, it will put Dick officially in second place in the race behind Tony Longhurst. Oh! oh. Longhurst is gone. Johnson's going to end up winning this. Not just yet. That what was a moment. He's got it back. Yeah. yeah, for the last lap I've been sitting here really confused about where they all are because there was only four seconds between Johnson and Longhurst the last time round, so now I'm really confused. <laughs> this is the man who leads the race. Car number three, Tony Longhurst, had a moment at the carousel, exiting Yokohama corner. And I think that Tony, I think you'll find, is now chasing probably uh, overheated tyres and he's going to have to steady himself down. He's really been just tailing this car around since the race started just as well he elected to go for the hardest compound that he could find. I, I, uh, I'm going to check my facts but I have a feeling that uh, there's been a big reshuffle of the placings here and Tony isn't the leader but I won't commit <laughs> myself, I'm going to go and do some homework. There's Longhurst, car number three. The man who picked up the race lead from uh, Dick Johnson when he was penalised 60 seconds for jumping the start. Longhurst goes through beneath the bridge, comes down into Hungry Corner. So he really has uh, something doing, uh, dropping pressure. a bit of oil here. Oh, yeah, it's uh, Steve Williams and the Commodore by the look of it. He's got some problems or a bit of blue smoke coming out of the left hand side. I wonder what happened to Tony Longhurst. Not got himself in a spin, I'd say. Down on the carousel, it's cost him valuable ground, and whether or not uh, that has allowed Dick Johnson, in fact, to assume the lead, uh, it's, it again depends on the clock, not so much on their positions on the track because of that uh, penalty. Uh, whether or not Johnson has managed to outrace the clock and snatch a victory here remains to be seen. There's still a few laps remaining, and uh, we can see that Longhurst has recovered from the spin and is out there making good time again. It's going to be a desperate finish, this. I bet it's got the uh, cams officials scratching their heads. Oh, so still, goodness oh, me. Out of shape. That was what Tony was like yesterday. He's certainly yep. a brave driver down there. He gives it absolutely everything, and that's, I guess, why Frank Gardner picked him. He gets her up on two wheels and does not let go. Steve Williams disappointed. The VK Commodore's got a problem. He's pulled to the pits. 
quick check under the hood, see what the problems are. This is a scrap for the minor placings. Uh, unofficially, I have Larry Perkins in fourth place, being chased by Peter Brock. Yeah, that's the one certain, uh, one of the two certainties in this race. Is that this is the battle for fourth place, and that Alan Moffat's in third place. Interesting confrontation. The two very different types of vehicles. Everybody opting for pretty hard tyres in this race. The mobile cars are certainly shod with a hard one at the moment. They expect it to be a lot stronger towards the end of the race than they were in the first bit. We're getting up towards the end of this uh, almost one hour confrontation. So Peter Brock really closing as they go up to the right-hander in motorcraft. He'll make the run down the bottom. This is where Larry's car would really suffer with a bit of grip late in the race, but it should be pretty quick down the straight. There's Perkins once again through the kink, down to the right-hander. Surprising performance by uh, Perkins today. Certainly shown a lot of uh, improvement here at, uh, at Lakeside for a big and powerful car around the circuit. Well, he had terrible problems in Adelaide with no grip and uh, he's had a couple of other silly little problems throughout the championship, so this will be welcome points for Larry Perkins. He's the leader, and he is the leader. We've uh, had people running all over the place, just double-checking uh, the split between he and Johnson, and that confirms that Johnson has not outrun the penalty of 60 seconds. Uh, so, Longhurst is the race... Oh, let's hope he remains that way, for his sake. Uh, he's the race leader, Tony Longhurst. Johnson is second, Moffat is third, Perkins fourth, Brock fifth, and Jim Richards, of whom we've seen very little uh, today, shuffled back in the pack, uh, is in sixth place. Stopwatch shows 14.07 seconds between Dick Johnson and Tony Longhurst as they went past the box that time. Well, he won't make that up in two laps, I don't think. No, I don't think so. If uh, Longhurst can just cool it just a little bit to bring it on home, but he is just throwing this car around. If anyone wants to do a reliability run on a Sierra, just give it to Tony. He has manhandled this car around the racetrack. He has not been easy on the tyres, I don't believe, since the race started. He's had one heck of a race with John Bauer. Threw the car around all the time. But as we mentioned earlier, started the race with the hardest compound tyres the team could lay their hands to. And he is heading towards victory in the Australian Touring Car Championship round at Lakeside today. Tony Longhurst coming down to the right-hander. This is where he wound up in strike before. Coming up to put a lap on Alan Moffat. Moffat doing a bit of racing with Tony, so Tony just elects to sit in here. Oh, dearie me, he covers a lot of ground. He's got this uh, Sierra wound up pretty tight, and he just wants to race anyway. One thing you've got to say about Tony Longhurst, he is the new breed, he is the racer. Here he comes over the top of motorcraft, will probably take a, a shot at Moffat uh, the next time that they head down the start finishing straight. They come through Castrol now, they work the front straight. Coming up to the line, Tony Longhurst in car number three. He made some ground on Moffat that time down the straight, an enormous amount. This is where he had trouble about six laps ago. The car swapped in He's right this time though as he comes out of there. So for Tony, he finished second in the opening round at Calder, fourth at Simmons Plains. Didn't start at Winton, he had so many problems on Saturday in practice. And then the last two race meetings in the Touring Car Championship, at least Wanneroo and Adelaide, not finishing either of them. I think he finished third in the first leg of the James Hardy Amscar series last week at Amaru and then came back strong with a win in the second leg. And seems to have done everything right today in the most topsy-turvy round of the Shell Ultra Touring Car Championship we've seen so far. Here he comes down the start finishing straight. And the flag out. Final lap is out. Final lap forward. But I believe as they've gone across the line, 
just ahead of um, of Tony Longhurst was in fact Dick Johnson. So they've hung the uh, one lap to go signal out in Johnson's favour. Keeping in mind that we've oh Tony getting it out in the grass that time. He's a fighter to the end. There's Dick Johnson, of course, the man who's going to get pinged 60 seconds off the start. But you'll find that Dick Johnson will come out in rather cir controversial circumstances. The checkered flag should come out now as they come across the line. The checkered flag is out. Johnson actually reaches there first. But, of course, Tony Longhurst in the Freeport Sierra coming down into the last corner now. So Longhurst stretching it out to go to the wire and just making it to... 16 seconds was the gap between Dick and Tony at the end. And, of course, Alan Moffat with the next one to come on in behind them in the ANZ Sierra. Then look at the scrap back behind them with Larry Perkins and, of course, Peter Brock. Well, what a race today at uh, Lakeside International Raceway. Dick Johnson, car number 17. I guess in the final analysis, really had to win this by 60 seconds to claim victory. Yeah, it was, uh, it was always going to be a pretty hard job. Yeah, the opposition are a little bit tough at the moment. But it has been a great season for Dick nonetheless. OK, he's jumped uh, 10 or 15 feet at the start, but he's still run away from them in terms of driving and engineering ability. Six pole positions so far in six rounds of the Touring Car Championship. The clear leader of the Shell Series and the NEC Car Star the grand master of the Park Royal pole position and the crowd really loving everything he's done. Well, they'll come back to sort it out as they went across the line. The flag went out in favour of Johnson over Longhurst and Moffat. Let's recap them for you on the scoreboard. These are provisional results only. Johnson first across the line, Longhurst second, Moffat third, Brock fourth and Jim Richards finishes fifth.